Greetings, Mr. Resentis here. We're on chapter 9, and we're talking about heat. The, uh, the thing about heat that you have to remember is that it's different from temperature. All right. So the topic is heat, but before we talk about heat, we're going to talk a little bit about temperature. All right. Now, temperature, just by way of definition, let's start with the working definition of temperature. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. Okay, so kinetic energy, what we mean, what you'll recall, what we mean by kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So the temperature is our attempt to measure the rate at which these particles are bouncing around. When they bounce around, they hit each other, creating some friction. And hits the wall, of course, and cre it creates hic friction. And that is what we're measuring when we're measuring temperature. Now, you'll recognize this matter map as gas. This would be slightly different if it was liquid, and it would be slightly different if it was a solid. And, um, in the, and the, the illustration would be very similar. But this is just a matter map of gas because, because the particles are so spread out, it's easier to recognize that we have very, that, that these particles are moving very slow, the vectors are small, these particles are moving very fast, the vectors are very big. And so here we have hot gas and here we have cold gas. Now, this is going to expand because they're bouncing into each other, and that's thermal expansion. We don't have time for that right now. But we recognize that temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. Now, there's another term, internal, t internal energy. The internal energy is another way to describe the energy due to random motion of particles. Right? So these are randomly moving. And the reason they're randomly moving is because energy has been introduced in and the the, we clearly want to we, we clearly want to distinguish the difference between energy flow and something having energy and the kinetic energy of the particles moving around so this has internal energy because energy has been added to it to allow for those particles to move randomly thermal equilibrium occurs, and as you can imagine with the term equilibrium, what this is going to mean, it's going to mean equal. Ther thermal equilibrium occurs when two objects of different internal energies come in contact thereby transferring energy until both have the same internal energy. So, when thermal equilibrium is reached, two substances have particle movement at a rate that is equal. That's what you're basically do, trying to do with a thermometer. 
you're taking a thermometer, you're putting it into a substance, you're taking a thermometer, putting it into a substance, and uh, so that the thermometer will achieve thermal equilibrium with its surroundings through conduction usually, energy is transferred to the th thermometer so that you can measure the rate at which the particles are moving. All right? Now, there are there are three scales to to measure to measure the uh, temperature. Kelvin, which is never described in degrees, only Celsius and Fahrenheit are described in degrees. Kelvin because it's a temperature is a measure of the kinetic energy, Kelvin brilliantly decided to come up with a zero point where there's no movement. So he theoretically said that zero is the absence of any particle movement. Celsius, zero is when water freezes. So here we have water that freezes at zero degrees C and 32 degrees Fahrenheit water freezes. Rather random. There's no zero point. Like when you measure when you measure something in centimeters, you have a zero centimeters, you have ten centimeters. Well, if you're measuring the rate at which particles are moving, you have to start zero with no movement. And that's Kelvin. That's why Kelvin that's why Kelvin's necessary. So we have 373 degrees Kelvin, 100 degrees Celsius, and 212 degrees is, of course, when water boils. Alright. Now, zero Kelvin would be a negative 273.15 degrees C and a negative 459.67 degrees F. That is the point at which there's no movement at all. At all. Now, as you can notice, one of the one of the things that's really nice about Kelvin and Celsius is that there is that each degree is one Kelvin, which is very which is very handy. However, we're going to have to we're going to have to turn our Fahrenheit to Celsius before we can get. Kelvin, all right. Now, just like you should know that a that a uh, about a, a half an inch is a centimeter, about a uh, a gram is a, is a is a paper clip, a yard is about a meter. Just you should also know that body temperature is ninety eight degrees Fahrenheit how much how many degrees is it in in Celsius well degrees Fahrenheit equals nine fifths degrees Celsius plus 32 you see the plus 32 here these are not one to uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius is not one to one it's nine fifths plus 32 so if we have if we have 98 and we move this to this side of the equation this 32 to this side of the equation then we minus 32 to move that over to this side of the equation divided by 9 fifths which is 1.8 that makes it easier just say 1.8 but I guess you could put 9 fifths underneath that if you want that'll equal our degrees Celsius and so it's 37 degrees Celsius is body temperature. So when you get an answer, you should be able to think in Celsius, uh, I think that makes sense, or I know it doesn't make sense. Um, another uh, another thing I, I remember, remember these are one-to-one, -one, so we could turn this into Kelvin qu quite easily. We could just say 37 degrees plus 273.15 equals 310 Kelvin. Remember, this is not degrees, it's just Kelvin. 310 is body temperature in Kelvin. Right. 
So this is this is very important. You should know this. You, you should be able you should be able to do that with uh, with um, without a problem. Well, let's go on to let's go on to chapter um, nine. Practice problems. And we'll do some practice problems A. Let's try, let's do number one. Um, and these practice problems <coughs> are on page um, 303. For, you want to follow along, we're on page 303. Number one, the lowest outdoor temperature ever is negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And that was in Antarctica. What is that in uh, Celsius? Well, um, that should be simple. That should be simple enough. I said negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and although I will say that um, some people uh, will beg to differ that they have been able, they have had colder than negative 128, 129. But uh, anyway, nine fifths Celsius plus 32. So I'll just say negative uh, 128.6 minus 32 divided by 1.8 equals uh, a negative 89.22 four sig figs, four sig figs degrees Celsius. Now, in Mel as I said before, there's 100, 180. I'm sorry, a negative 98 degrees Celsius. Of course, at that temperature, flesh just burns. Kelvin, excuse me, I forgot my, Kelvin equals a negative 89.22 plus 273.15. You just, be, you just add 273.15 to the Celsius because there's a one-to-one -one relationship. It's just that, it's just that um, the, as we said before, 273 is, uh, is is zero in Celsius, so all you have to do is add it, and then you get Kelvin. That, and so that's simple enough. So it's so in Kelvin is 183.9, and remember you don't say degrees, right? That's number one. Number two, um, number two, uh, the temperature on one, on one northeastern state range from 100. And Five in the summer to negative 25 in the winter. Express this range in degrees Celsius and in degree Celsius. All right. Well, <clears throat> a range. Um, let's see. We, we could just we'll just do the the upper and the lower limits of the range is, is all we'll do. Uh, I think that'd be simple enough. We're just practicing converting. Um, so 105 degrees Fahrenheit equals nine fifths centigrade plus 32, so 105 minus 32 divided by 1.8, which is just 9, this, all I did was I just divided that, and then and then once I divided it, I put it underneath here so that I, so that I can get it, I'll get the C by itself, equals 40.6 degrees centigrade, and then all I have to do is add, um, 273 to this, and, and I got the Kelvin. So uh, 40.6 degrees centigrade plus 273.15 equals um, 314, and that would be Kel that would be our Kelvin. Right. And then um, we, that's the upper limits. That's the upper limits of the. Uh, um, the range. The lower limits would be um, what was it? It was a negative 25. Yeah, negative 25. Um, and I'm skipping a step here. Just negative 25 minus 32 divided by 1.8, and that will equal negative uh, 32 degrees. Right. So uh, a negative 25 minus 32 divided by 1.8 is uh, negative 32. Yeah. All right. So um, Kelvin is Kelvin is just going to be. All I have to do is add the 273. So uh, 
and that would be 241. All right, so those are the upper. This is the upper and this is the lower limit. See, this is in degrees C, the upper and the lower limits of the range, and here it is in Kelvin. All right. Now, we could we we could get the the temperature range by subtracting just by subtracting the two. Let's try one where we actually have to do that. Let's do um, let's do one more. Let's do number four quickly here. Number four, um, skipping number three. I recognize that just because number three is is very very similar. Four. What we're doing now is we're we're um, uh, we have a pan of water from uh, 23 degrees C, and we're we want to put it into Fahrenheit. So we're doing the uh, we're doing the opposite uh, now. So Fahrenheit degrees equals nine fifths. 23 degrees C plus 32. So this is simple enough. It's just 9 times 23 divided by 5 plus 32. So that's that's easy enough. 73.4. I did the harder one first, and that's in degrees. Now remember what you have to do. Um, uh, okay, so that's so that is the we've converted we've converted the lower limits to Fahrenheit. Now let's convert the upper limits to Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths 78 degrees C plus 32. So this is the upper limits of the range, 172.4. And that's in Fahrenheit. So temp the change in temperature would be the, the uh, Fahrenheit degrees final minus the Fahrenheit degrees initial. And all I did, all I have to do is subtract those two. So 172.4 minus 73.4, and that's going to equal 99 degrees <coughs> Fahrenheit is the range. And, and that's, uh, you could, you, and then you could do the same thing. You do the same thing for Kelvin. The only thing with Kelvin is that you're going to have to do, you're going to have to uh, remember use the centigrade. Don't use the uh, don't use the uh, Fahrenheit. And remember, these are kelvins, and then I'm just going to subtract those two to get the range. All right. So here are the kelvins for the upper and the lower range, the final and the initial. And um, and then if sub, if I subtract those two, I get 55k. All right. So I just I did it in Fahrenheit and I did it in, Cal in, in 